Alright, this is my review of the KLR650. Now, there's a lot of reviews on KLR650s on the internet, but this one's mine. This is a 2017 model. Um, I have not owned this motorcycle for very long. This is the only, the second Kawasaki I've ever owned. Um, I'm kind of a KTM guy for disclosure. Um, I actually uh, was a parts manager at a shop for about eight years and um, I just bleed orange and you know I just read a lot of good things about these and travel the world on them. I, I never in my life figured I would own a KLR650 and this review is going to cover what I do like about it and what I do not like about it. Um, KLR650s just they just are what they are and it's either going to suit you really well or it's not. A little bit of background on me. Um, a motocross racer and I've, I've been out of that sport for quite some time and I'm getting kind of back into motorcycling and I really didn't have the budget for um, kind of the bigger fancier KTMs that I wanted to be on. Um, so I figured this would kind of get me going. I could put a few little mods on it and kind of get it up to up to snuff and then it would be a very capable off-road bike and with a hundred percent honesty um it, with my background uh i was a very aggressive uh wide open motocross racer who liked to land on his head a lot and this is not the bike for that kind of rider i had like zero four stroke experience uh zero big thumper experience i always rode small bore two strokes um always wide open at you know whatever 10,000 11,000 rpms so when i got on this tractor and it was wanting to chug around at you know two to three thousand rpms um it was a little bit hard for me to adjust that's not anything wrong with the bike it's actually really really quite nice that it just puts along and and cruises and commutes um, but that wasn't my personality so uh, <laughs> it, it took a little adjustment so what I do like about this bike I'll start out with it is a tractor once you kind of get used to that it's uh, just load it down with tons of gear I mean I've watched a ton of videos where people were um, you know traversing the world on these things uh, one guy Alex in particular and he's taken one of these things everywhere I am confident in its capabilities to go everywhere they are like literally bomb proof you know like 80,000 miles on these things super high oil capacity I believe it's uh, right at almost three quarts um, after break-in I put synthetic oil in this thing I swear on my life that that gauge runs cooler now so it's uh, probably running more efficiently um, so it's a good pack horse um, the engine is really really smooth and nice on the road it's got nice tractable power on the road it's never never dangerous feeling you know it's, it's not gonna get away from you unless you're a really ex inexperienced rider um, the ergonomics stock are okay um, they're much more suited for a smaller rider um, I have a couple other reviews that I just did on the JNS foot peg lowering kit and the rocks riser kit so see my profile and find those videos too for those that opened the cockpit up for me a lot got my arms up got me a little bit back further on the flatter part of the seat no joke this thing is like riding a sofa chair it is I mean the the next closest thing I can compare it to is like a gold wing or something like I said I've worked in shops for years and I've ridden a lot of motorcycles and this thing is just a freaking couch it is it's really pleasant. I've spent nine hours at a time on this thing just recently and at the end of the day was not tired at all and just wanted to keep riding. And so it's it's a big comfy couch. I'm really, really happy with it as a commuter. Um, if... Uh, if I really was getting into this thing, I think I would like to put a recluse clutch on it. Um, and one of the reasons I did that is because it's only a five speed. And when I'm out on the highways, I don't really like 
to buzz this thing out. They vibrate a little bit, you know, being a big thumper. And I like to keep it in the little bit lower RPMs. So I put a 16 tooth counter shaft on this. Um, the stock one is a 15. And so that dropped me um, about 500 RPMs on the highway. And so I cruise pretty comfortably. I think it's 60 miles an hour at about uh, 3,500 RPMs, maybe like 3,800 RPMs. Um, I'm probably gonna jet the bike a little bit better. I did re-jet it a little bit. Um, it might be still a little bit lean in the middle or just gonna fatten it up in the middle a little bit to smooth it out at 4,000 RPMs because it kind of has this uh, just flat vibrating spot right about 4,000 and then it comes back to life at about 4,800 RPMs and then it pulls really nice from like 48 to 6,500 which is pretty buzzy on these things. I mean, it's pretty pretty high in the R's, I should say. Uh, get the glare out of there. You can see red line is eight. So when you're when you're pulling up there, up around seven and stuff, it's it's romping pretty good. I'm confident in it. It's it, it's decent road power up there. Um, but uh, that's where I start to kind of talk about what I don't like about the KLR. Another do the fuel capacity thing is huge tank awesome range i don't know um the farthest i ever took it without filling it was 226 miles i was riding two up with full bags and these are the big tusk panniers um fully loaded two people were not heavy people she was maybe maybe 115 pounds and um i'm a runner so i'm a maybe 150 soaking wet when it, when that ride happened and um so we, we weren't huge but we were riding in the wind 75 miles an hour uphill at elevation you know 6,000 plus feet elevation so it was it was hogging on the main jet pretty good and not getting good fuel economy and i hit i think 226 miles and then it sputter 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 and i had to put it into reserve on the tank um, and then there's like when I went to the gas station and filled it up It was only like four and a half gallons and I think this is a six gallon tank So this is I don't know 300 miles of range on that thing just guessing I don't know But it's a tremendous range The problem is is when you fill that thing up all the way and you go a long ways and you're doing off-road riding all that weight is over the front and this because it's in kind of an entry-level bike um, the suspension on the front of this thing is mush and I guess this is where, where I'll start where that things that I don't like about the KLR 650 number one I wish it had a six-speed transmission I know that probably require a whole redesign of the engine and stuff but um, I really wish it had a sixth gear um, the other thing I wish it had like a KX250 front end on it or something because these forks are very small diameter and they're very very squirrely this thing this thing pushes i'm an aggressive motocross guy with the weight of the bike and i don't even weigh very much i'm not a big guy um it's just extremely spongy in the front end and that wheel just deflects off everything i've ordered the um mike's brace it should be here today but i actually put this bike down once because that that front wheel just goes wherever the hell it wants and so that is a big beef with me on this particular bike. I know it's just a tractor for putting along, but you know, it's an, it's an off-road bike and I kind of wanted to use it off-road and that, in my opinion, Kawasaki could just step up a little bit on the forks on this thing. This is a big bike for how puny those forks are. I don't know, 38 millimeters, some ridiculously puny things and they're really, really long. Um, so anyway, the front suspension is a major drawback. Uh, one thing I did before I do, did springs is I got these uh, preload caps on eBay for, I don't know what they were, 30 bucks maybe. They're really, really nice looking. They installed super simple. Um, they're billet and they're adjustable preloads, probably about 20 millimeters or so. And that seems like it helped preload the front end a little bit and make it a little bit stiffer, but um, it probably needs springs. I didn't really see anybody that makes straight rate springs for this thing yet. I'm sure there is. You know, I just looked in the simple places, Eibach and stuff like that, and didn't really see. But um, 
Most of it's progressive. Personally, I absolutely hate progressive suspension. Um, just motocross background thing, I just hate it. Anyway, um, so in, in, in my review, I'm gonna say that the Kawasaki's front suspension is dog shit, excuse my French. Um, I'm sure the fork brace will make a difference, make it at least functional, but in stock trim, um, it's really not that functional in, in my opinion. Um, you know, I paid, I paid for this bike, so it's, it's not like I'm just going to give it a rave review because, because, uh, you know, I had to fork a bunch of money out of my pocket to do it. So, um, the cockpit, you can see I have a pair of pro tapers on it and the rocks risers, um, to open it up. And of course there's the KLR dash on there, which I also reviewed. Um, I have a love hate relationship with that as well. So to the engine, the engine is very streetable. It's, um, it's very usable on the street. Like I said, I put the bigger counter shaft on it to get it going on the highway speeds a little bit better. But because this bike with the bags and stuff on it weighs 500 pounds, it's very, very capable on the road. It, I mean, I ride in really, really windy conditions and I'm confident on this thing. I've, it's never sketchy. It's always a couch. Um, the power is, is okay on the road. Where I have a problem is the power off-road. It's a big bike, and unless you're really kind of hogging on it in the upper RPMs, like around 5,000 RPMs or something, which this is totally capable of doing, but it doesn't, it just doesn't seem like, it just doesn't have very much horsepower at the lower RPMs, so you can't, you can't bail yourself out of shit situations, like if the front end is to get all squirrely on you and you kind of need to, you know, get on the power and like, lighten the front end up a little bit this bike there's pictures of people doing wheelies and stuff on on youtube and them and stuff but this bike just doesn't have enough power to pull the wheel not even a snowball's chance in hell that this has enough power to pull the front wheel off the ground so it's um especially loaded you know with anything on the front you can see mine's all in the back um it's just it just in my opinion for semi-aggressive off-road riding um it just doesn't have enough power it's just it's 10 horsepower underpowered um totally fine on the street very comfortable on the street nice smooth put 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 through traffic um you know the en engine runs really well but um off-road it just especially you know if you have a full fuel tank there's just not enough not enough snot in it um see what's another thing so another thing that i don't like about the klr is the wheel size it's a 17 there's absolutely nothing wrong with that um the tires plenty fat back there there's you know it's it's not bad you can still see i still have the stock dunlop on there which is an absolute piece of shit um in my opinion it's really probably it's okay for street riding um dunlop on the front too um, this tire has 2,300 miles on it, um, <laughs> and it's, it's basically all the way down. I mean, it's got some side knobs and stuff on it. Uh, I did a lot of my miles are, are on the road to get anywhere to ride the dirt. And this just, I mean, this is a 2,500 mile tire. It's, uh, it's junk. So... <laughs> Anyway, it is what it is. That's what it comes with. Um, like I said, it's, it's very capable on the street, but it does not last very long. Um, so the problem with the wheel size is, is there's not a lot of stuff available. There's a lot of tires available for it, but like tubes and heavy duty tubes and stuff like that. I just wasn't seeing a lot of stuff out there for this. And that bugs me a little bit. I mean, if you have like a, an 18 inch, you can get a ton of stuff. You can get the tubeless systems, all that stuff. But this just just doesn't have that. I really do like the how Kawasaki black the rims though. That looks it looks really good. I mean the whole thing. I mean this is a KLR 650. Here he said the KLR 650 is sexy is probably a little bit off in the head, but the styling of these things now is actually pretty good. It, it looks like a pretty nice motorcycle. Um, I peeled the graphics off as you can see, but so 
Another beef I have this thing stock, and it's not really Cali's fault because I'm sure it's government crap, but they got that big ass um, sub fender thing that comes down here and it hangs way down here. I don't know if I'm the only guy in the world that has a problem with this, but holy crap, I broke my license plate off twice in like the first week. Um, I lost one, I ripped another one off. Um, so what I did, I just drilled some holes in the fender and I used the, the bracket um, and just drilled it in there. This thing is super solid. It's up out of the way now. We have these safety stickers in Hawaii. I had to stick on there. It's real clean, out of the way, matches up. Um, so there's that. Um, I have not done the subframe upgrade kits on this thing. Um, a lot of people recommend that for hauling things. I did blue Loctite these in. This one did back out. Um, and I could see if you have a ton of weight on it and it backed out that they would break off or whatever. But anyway, I haven't done that upgrade. Um, I've blue Loctited everything on this bike that I've touched. Um, it needs it. The first week it lost seat bolts and stuff. I've had a lot of new motorcycles. Stuff rattles loose in new motorcycles. So um, every time I touch something, I put blue Loctite on it. Um, like I said, I did rejet this a little bit. I am at altitude a lot. One thing that's really pretty nice about this thing, it's really simple to adjust this rear shock. Um, I'm a light guy, I have the, the thing set on zero or one or whatever you'd call it, but if you want to stiffen up the preload in this thing, you just go chunk, 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 and it and it preloads the things to stiffen it up. And so I put it like on three when I had the person on the back, and it, it, it does ride good. Um, nice manual pet cock on this thing that's that's good I like to uh, run out of gas and know that there's a reserve and not just run out of gas and not have a reserve so I'm happy with that um, you know the the turn signals and stuff I've had a couple of them the bolts come loose inside but um, you know they look good um, the whole bike looks pretty good the lighting is okay um, I haven't ridden it at night too much. Seemed like it worked okay. The, the bulbs are kind of just those, I don't know, yellow halogens. I don't know, they're not really super great or anything, but I guess it's okay for stock lighting. Um, nice little window for your oil. Real clean. Um, the stock pegs, I don't mind. Like I said, I'm, I, or maybe I didn't say it was in another video probably. Um, I ride in running shoes a lot, so I just kept the stock rubbers on there. Um, they're they're fine for me. I can imagine why people would want to get rid of them. But, um, you know, you get mud or something on there, your feet are going to fly right off. But my shoes are basically always dry, and I'm, I'm, I'm just in a, like a deserty type environment, right? Except for right now, I'm up in the jungle. But um, I don't have mud on my feet ever, so these aren't a problem. I don't mind them at all. Um, I like to keep the, the passenger pegs down. I throw my feet up there to kind of kind of open my hips up a little bit sometimes when I'm highway riding. Um, I put the tusk panniers on this bike. Um, the mounting brackets for that are really nice. They have a, a quick release thing over here. I have mine locked on with a screw, um, so I can't take them off for you at the moment, but I just use these little, little hooks to keep the damn thing from flopping around back here. Um, they have a a little bracket that relocates these uh, turn signals. I bent the bracket a little bit to tighten the turn signals up into the rear. Um, I just like to, to mess with things like that and kind of adjust things to where I like them. But these you just pull the cord and the, the pull box comes right off. Massive, massive quantity. Um, the only drawback is they're aluminum so they are a little bit heavy. Um, if you crash the bike it lands on these things instead of the front. You almost don't even need the crash guards. I mean, if you really, really ate crap, you probably would need some crash guards. But but anyway, the boxes take the, the brunt of it. Um, so let's see, what have, I, what have I covered here? This is a really long, this is kind of a full feature review. Um, another thing I hate, absolutely hate on this bike, is the front brake. It is absolute dog crap. It has no power. No power whatsoever. Um, I'm used to riding motocross bikes that are light with big brakes and you know KTM's and stuff with steel braided lines and Brembo's on them. Um, I adjusted the lever out so that it was a little bit less mushy and it would kind of start to have power before it got too close to the to the grip. 
um, this that brake still does not have power you have to get on both brakes and you have to squeeze the damn thing really hard it's the weakest front brake I've ever had on a bike outside of like my XR80 pit bike it's uh, it feels like an old drum it's really really pretty pathetic um, steel braided line might help that a little bit I mean it's I can't imagine that it's that bad of a brake it's got a it's got a decent looking rotor on it I don't know what the diameter is um, but you know and it's in this and brake or whatever it's got the the Honda style routing on it so it potentially dual piston so it potentially it should work well but I think maybe it needs a steel braided line or something it's it is just not a powerful brake and this is a big bike um, I find myself when I'm stopped on steep uphills um, that you really have to grab it to pretty good to even keep from like rolling backwards um, it's kind of sad so I kind of keep my foot on the rear brake too where should be able to just hold the front I don't know maybe I'm not used to riding big heavy bikes but but uh, usually the front brake just this holds me I don't know but anyway it's it's not powerful at all um, nice thing about the KLR uh, I'll say another nice thing here it's really pretty simple to work on I've never even really used any real tools on it. Um, I pretty much use this little toolkit thing all the time. Um, it's got basically everything you need in it. Axle wrenches and the only thing it doesn't have, um, I don't know if mine fell out, got lost or whatever, but I haven't found an 8mm in there to take off the the bolts for the like the seat and, and all, the, all the fasteners for any of the body work. But everything else you need is in there. And so I use that little toolkit all the time. It's totally functional. Um, let's see. The All the handlebar controls are pretty good. I don't really like these little round Mickey Mouse mirrors. I, I would like maybe a little bit longer ones. They're pretty functional. They're sturdy. They don't vibrate, wiggle. Um, I really can't complain about how they function. I just would like a, maybe a little bit better shape. That's easy enough. You can get mirrors for... 16 bucks or something um the switch feels a little bit more barbaric than like my ktm stuff it was a little bit crustier maybe it'll it'll break in a little bit um they take a lot of room on the handlebars you can see i barely had enough room on the handlebars my my brake lever is actually right kind of near the bend which uh it, it seems to work fine but uh, i would prefer that it not be there um, stock grips actually pretty decent. I know that's kind of a petty thing to to say, but the the stock grips are pretty decent. A lot of people complain about this stock seat. This is the damn softest seat I've ever owned in my life. Um, I'm a, like I said I'm a KTM guy for the most part, and I'm used to sitting on boards. Um, I'm not saying that that's comfortable for me, but it's just this big soft couch. Like I said, I sat on that thing for nine damn hours and didn't have a single problem with it. Um, so that's good but yeah pretty simple bike to work on um, there is one little trick to to fill it with fluid I can't remember what the, what the trick is but anyway the, the radiator caps down there somewhere oh no sorry that was the wrong bike I'm, I'm retarded that was one of my other bikes but anyway um, it is a carbureted bike, so I ride at elevation a lot. It's got this nice little uh, idle adjustment screw on the outside. I am constantly adjusting this thing because of the elevations that I climb to from from sea level to 10,000 feet every single day. So I, I, I'm adjusting this thing a couple turns all the time. Um, I did rejet it. Um, I did the L-shaped cut in the top of the airbox. Um, I removed the snorkel on the other side. It increased the intake noise quite a bit. Um, but I don't know. I feel like maybe it helped, made it more responsive. Um, and then, of course, I jetted it too, which obviously needs to be done when you do stuff like that. But um, anyway, overall, as far as a, a commuter, I'm really pretty happy with this, uh, this KLR. So if you're... A very light off-road guy who just kind of likes dirt roads and gravel roads um, and you just like to putt along and look at nature and stuff and and commute to work this thing is very very functional 
these nice shrouds your your knees sit right in here i'm i mean i'm in this kind of a tire most of the time fully exposed legs from the wind and rain um you hide behind these really nice there's some heat that comes out of them too you, it, you're really really out of the elements in this cockpit i'm i'm very pleased with the cockpit of this motorcycle as far as protection um it's the standing position's a little bit wide uh like i said i'm a motocross guy i like to kind of maybe a little bit narrower bike and the kind of kind of grip it a little bit more but um it's for normal commuting type riding it's it's really comfortable this thing is super super comfortable long distance cruiser like i said it's kind of a gold wing with dirt bike tires um so if that's the kind of thing you're looking for then great it's not exactly what i'm looking for um so i am likely getting rid of this motorcycle but um it's just not what I need. There's nothing against it. I, I really don't want to talk any smack about it. It's just not as off-road capable as I would like. And so I'm really going to need to be on a, on a KTM. But um, it is what it is. Price point is great. Um, I would just have to throw so much money at it that um, uh, to get it to do what I want. And it still would be a KLR and not really do what I want. Um, not to, to bash that. Another mod that, that was probably, I would say, is pretty important is the magnetic drain plug. See if I can focus. Magnetic drain plug that's low profile. Do that. It hangs down a little bit. Um, if you snag that baby on a rock, that could be really, really bad. I have the stock skid plate on there. I've bashed this off a few rocks. Um, I think it protects fairly decent. Obviously, this sticks out a little bit here, but... I mean, it might take a couple of decent hits before it breaks. And then I put a little piece of plastic um, underneath here. I put it, I mounted it with these two bolts. Little piece of plastic in there to protect the exposed. Sorry, this is really crappy video, but um, this part of the engine was a little bit exposed, and I didn't want anything to kind of <clears throat> bounce up and whack into that. So I used this uh, little uh, <clears throat> license plate fender thing that it came with and I just drilled holes in it and mounted it there so there's a, a little bit of a, a spot for it to stop um, a few, some debris um, anyway yeah it's a it's a it's a real clean motorcycle it uh, the fan controls itself pretty well I know that there's a lot of thermostat mods for it um, if I keep it I will potentially do that I doubt I will keep it um, but now that I run the synthetic oil in it, it stays about about 30% on the, the gauge there almost all the time, unless I'm in really um, stop and go type traffic. Um, it's between 90 and 100 degrees most of the time when I'm riding, and so um, I expect it to, to warm up a little bit when I'm just sitting there idling along. But um, yeah. I don't know. I haven't. I didn't do the doohickey mod or anything. the The clutch is the clutch is fine. It's not too stiff. Uh, the hydraulics on the KTM is much much nicer. But hey, we're not comparing apples to to oranges here. We're comparing you know whatever. Um, but yeah, it's a very very functional motorcycle. Very nice budget motorcycle. Um, it was it was an experiment for me. Um, I know now what I need. The KLR really isn't what I need. But that said, if uh, if I was tight on money, um, which I am, but if I was if I was you know a college kid or something, and needed uh, needed something really good to commute on that was bomb proof, gets killer mileage. I think I'm getting about 48 miles to the gallon. I haven't checked for a while. Um, but that's that's some pretty aggressive riding too. So, I mean, somebody said 48 miles an hour, 40 miles a gallon on a KLR. That's not very good. Well, it's pretty good, um, and it's pretty good for the way that I ride it. But um, anyway, a lot of people say 50 and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm at elevation, wide open, blah blah blah. But uh, this is a this is a very functional motorcycle for somebody on a budget. Um, I just feel kind of like I can 
outride its abilities and so I am uh, personally going to upgrade but I will kind of miss it. It's really comfortable. So anyway I think I've covered kind of most of uh, what I think I should cover. So if you really want to ride it off road uh, or a couple of the must do mods um, if you have any height to your body at all get the JNS um, foot peg lowering kit get a set of risers um, do the foot pegs first to see if you need the risers or not the stock bars are pretty tall if you want more wind out of your face the KLR dash um, does work very well for that this thing I've, I've gone 97 miles an hour on this thing and it keeps the wind out of your face there's no no turbulence in your head at all at six feet tall um, definitely needs better tires these are crap my tires are in the mail right now matter of fact they probably are delivered to my house at this very moment um, do enjoy these saddle bags I really really like those and uh, yeah just just do regular maintenance on this thing and I'm sure it'll it'll last forever so that is my review of the KLR 650. This happens to be a 2017 model. Um, I've ridden it 2,000 miles, so I figured I would give it a little fair shake before I kind of reviewed it. And um, it's a great motorcycle. I just don't know if it's a great motorcycle for me. So uh, anyway, um, hopefully this helps somebody. Maybe it helps somebody make a decision for or against it. Um, but yeah in a nutshell great motorcycle um just uh just not quite what i need so uh anyway that's it i uh, hope you enjoyed this i know it was pretty long uh, we'll call it a full feature review um i never expected it to be this long but i think i covered a lot of stuff 